you guys welcome back to our channel so in this episode uh, i'm going to talk about the the tinder swindler the kenyan edition though uh women who were conned by men in the name of love so one mentioned that i offered to help the guy buy a car when he sold his he gave me i gave him a million shilling loan that he would pay back he paid in full he got my trust he bought a forester. A doctor confessed. So, you know about the Tinder swindler by now. You have probably watched it or planning to. It is pretty much what everyone is talking about. And it is number one trending on YouTube, on Twitter. So, if you haven't, please do and see how character development is served on a global scale, not just within our borders. So for the majority who have watched this documentary, one thing is left, uh, uh, is left hanging over them when it is over. How can, uh, can you let a man fool you like this, I wonder? So there was even a, a Twitter joke that said, Tinder swindler will never happen in Nairobi because our Kanairo girls will just ask you why so utadu and keep it moving. They say that uh, the movie would have been five minutes long but boy and girl are they wrong? There are Kenyan women nursing massive heartaches because they have a similar experience to the girls in Tinder swindler so they will probably watch it with tears in their eyes. I think um I'm a victim too. <laughs> Joke. So last year, celebrated doctor went on a Facebook and asked her, opened the floodgates with this post. I quote, let me start a hashtag me too on stories of men conning women with the woo of romantic relationships. So anyone encourages uh, enough anyone encourages enough to, to share the story can post it in the comment section. Otherwise, uh, my DM is open and I can share it anonymously on your behalf. So her comment section turned into a therapy platform for thousands of thousands of women who are replying or they're repaying loans and trying to steady their lives after the experience. So we have one doctor who posted a whopping 12,000 uh, loan. And uh, a story has been shared more than 1,000 times. I meant 12 million. And uh, the content is just an eye-popping as uh, Cecily, uh, the Norwegian woman who was swindled over 25 million Kenyan shillings by Sh Sh Simon Hayut, who, as, uh, who posed as a billionaire on popular dating website called Tinder. So like this woman who offered to help her architect husband buy a car after he sold his, forking over one million in a loan. So she mentioned that I offered to help the guy buy a car when he sold his, gave him one million shilling loan that he would pay, which he paid in full, which is good. And after getting a trust, he bought a forester. She confessed to the doctor. I will not mention her name. I sold my Demio at 430K and sent him the whole amount because I wanted to upgrade. He wanted me to take a loan for 6 million, but we settled at 3 million. Oh my God, which was to add to my Demio money and get me a car for about 1.7 million. The rest was to buy land, she recalled. So according to this unwilling graduate from the School of Character Development, her <laughs> lover went to buy a Mercedes-Benz with the entire three million. Can you imagine that? So let's just say, I'm quoting her, the next thing I saw was the coolest looking Mercedes at my doorstep. He had spent the whole amount. He changed the narrative that I seemed to have really wanted the Mercedes. She had, so suffice to suffice it to say both cars were in his name and uh, he has since stopped paying the loan when we broke up. Sold both Forrester and Mercedes and now has a Helix. So another woman claimed she had the picture perfect relationship with a man. She mentioned in her Facebook post, I quote, 
he took me out to expensive places before you know it. We are going on vacations, many times as couple girls. She shared that on Facebook. Another one mentioned about one time he needs to go on a business trip, ask for 200K. Uh, what is that amount compared to what I'd get? Then he asked to, to me to sell my car. He top up for me to import a German machine. She said, well, so long story short, but uh, the short of it is that uh, this man went on to propose and the date for Rurashio was set. That is uh, the introduction date for Kikuis in Kenya. So the day of, uh, of Nyombo, as they call it in Luo, the marriage day, my fiancé did not show, not his people, not any other guest. I call Yukom Teja. She, he was offline, out of reach. So I realized I didn't know any family member to contact my heart, my body. What will happen to all this food? Who will pay for all these people that had helped us? So this was the longest uh, Jamhuri weekend. Jamhuri is a Swahili word meaning independence. I wanted the earth to swallow me as the day came to an end, she narrated. So after standing up on the traditional wedding, the man went an extra step of moving out of the house they had rented in Nairobi, never to be seen again. She mentioned that I came back to Nairobi, my house is clean, caretaker is like, aliamua kuhama bila notice, unajua utalipa rent ya mwezi moja. At that moment, I wished I passed out and woke up from this dream, she added. So according to this doctor, the woman who previously owned a car, went to a good job, is now homeless, coach surfing from a friend to friend, hoping her parents would take her back. And the more women confessed online, the more it became apparent that the documentary was just a tip of the iceberg. So somebody mentioned, this doctor continued to say that my situationship was with a doctor, met him online, and after meeting up in person, he asked me to help him set up a tour company, which he would take over after returning to Kenya. We agreed he would pay me 30000 consultancy fee per month, which at the time of terminating my dealings with him was at 540000 a victim said too. As another lady narrates that he took over the company with his wife, whom he had said is his sister, by the way, during the paperwork, etc. And I'm still trying to get my 180000 back, though I have maxed out my patience and decided to move on. He's a refined doctor, well-spoken, connected, and works for a number of non-governmental organizations on consultancy basis. So there are many more harrowing details that you can check on our Facebook page. So this one is just to show you that not only this uh, Norwegian woman who was a victim to this uh, this, this kind of swindler is a, is, 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 is a victim or has a story to tell. A lot of women worldwide have been conned scammed over love and they're not speaking so if you have been a victim please leave a comment at the at the comment section so that uh, you can connect to us so i have a story i will tell later though so this one was just uh, about others so do well to subscribe so as you will stay tuned stay connected so that when i upload my story <laughs> I will, you will be able to be updated or rather notified by clicking that the post notification bell so that you join the family. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up too. Remember, a like is always appreciated. Comment, share your story. If you need to tell me more about your story, you can uh, reach me on the email at the description box so that we can talk and you share your story. This says talking it is like a therapy. If you keep quiet, it will continue chewing you. And so I know there are people who have met the loves of their lives online. So that doesn't mean everyone will be a victim of uh, these uh, con artist men have been using lately. So just be extra careful and uh, use your sixth, uh, sixth sense. Don't just believe people naively. Take time, get to know them, know their family, and uh, do a lot of uh, video calls if they are 
people you've met online. Don't be stupid. Be wise and you get to keep your, your heart intact. Don't be heartbroken because of uh, desperately looking for love. Just take precaution and uh, I wish you all the best.